Mike here from PlayWhatYouWant.com, bringing you part four of my five-part series introducing you to playing chord changes on your piano at home. In this lesson, I'm going to introduce you to the 12-bar blues. Now, the 12-bar blues goes back over 100 years and has formed the foundation for thousands upon thousands of blues songs, jazz tunes, rock and roll, country music, and pop songs today. The 12-bar blues is something that musicians all over the world know, and I'm going to show it to you right now. Right here on this PDF to your right is the 12-bar blues. I have it written out in Roman numerals so that this first chord here is 1-7. Musicians often use Roman numerals so that when you are playing in different keys, so if you're in C, if you're in D, if you're in E, if you're in A flat, it doesn't matter what key. If you think of the numbers, the Roman numerals of the chord, it means that you can apply this form to any of the 12 key centers. Let me show you what I mean. We're going to say we're in C. The one chord in C is obviously C. Now later on in the song, we get to a four chord. To get to four, you just count up. One, two, three, four. Count up the notes of a C major scale. Four is going to be an F chord, therefore. If we go back, C is one, D then is two, E is three. We just said F is four. Five is G, six is A, seven is B, and then we're back to C at one. So this is how you use Roman numerals to figure out what chords you're playing. So we're going to use this system in C. To play a C blues, let me walk you through this blues form. The first chord is one seven, which is going to be your C dominant seven chord. Dominant seven, remember, is if you take the high C, walk it down two half steps, that's your dominant seven chord major triad with a minor seventh on the top. The next chord I have in parentheses because the blues over its hundreds of years have developed many different variations. Now this is a very common one. So instead of having a 1-7 for the first four measures of your blues, a lot of people put in a 4-7 on the second bar. So to get to 4-7, count up from C. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's F. And there's your F7 chord. Then we're back to C7. Measure 5 right here, we're back to F7 for 2 bars, and then C7 for 2 bars. Below that, we're at 5-7. So 5-7, count up from C. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is G. G7 goes down to F7, goes down to C7. Now let's apply the inversions that we know. If we're at C7 here, and we want to get to F7, I'm going to play the F7 notes in blue below. Well, we already have a C, so you can leave your C there. To get to your E flat, just move your E down to E flat. To get to an F, move your G down to F. And to get to your A, move your B flat down to A. So that now, our F chord is right next to our C chord. So there's C, there's F, F7, C7, F7. You don't have to move a single note more than a whole step. The same thing can be done to G, and I'll let you figure out G on your own. Um, or, if you want to keep watching, you can see how I do it. I'm going to play through the 12-bar blues form after I show you one more thing, which is how to put a nice, simple bass line to this. To keep the tempo, it's going to be really nice if you put a walking bass line. Now, the easiest way to come up with a walking bass line right now is to, with your left hand, outline a C major triad. So that when you're playing the 1-7 chords, what I want you to do is arpeggiate that triad. So by arpeggiate, I mean go up and down the individual notes. So what we're going to do is make this 12-bar blues form be in 4-4 four, four time, meaning there's four beats per measure. So each one of these notes will get one beat. One, two, three, four, until we go to the next measure. And if you put that over your 1-7 chord in the top, now we're starting to sound like a blues. Next is the four chord. All I'm doing is outlining that F triad with my left hand and doing the arpeggio. Back to one. One. Four chord. Four seven. Back to the one. One, two, three, four. Everything has four beats. Here's the five seven. To the four seven. Back to one. At that point, we're at the end of the form, and we can repeat back to the top and play it all over again until the end of the song. 
I'm going down here because this way you can see the actual written out letters of that blues form, C7, F7, and it's just our way of applying the Roman numerals to the key of C. Remember, all of these PDFs are available for free download from my website, so feel free to check out my channel, look in the comments, and there will be a link to take you to a hidden page where you can download all of these PDFs. So now for an example, a real-world example, I brought the tune Kansas City. Kansas City is a 12-bar blues, and it's actually in the key of C as well, so that makes it real easy for us to make that transition. Now, when you're playing Kansas City, you might not want to just hold the chord and do your bass notes. You might want to do some rhythmic hits. So nice rhythmic hits are really up to you. What you can do is just practice doing this bass line. You can leave it just right there on C and try and do hits like that. And now it sounds bluesy. Then try doing the progression. So here's the F7. back to C, one, two, three, just like that. And now when you're playing that, you can sing over it, or you can have someone else sing over it. So I'm going to apply that to Kansas City. Here it is. I'm going to Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. I'm going to Kansas City, Kansas City, here I come. Crazy way of loving that I'm gonna get me some. And there's our 12 bars, and now we would repeat with the next verse or the chorus. So that's how to play a blues. And you can take this to a jam session, you can play with guitar players, with bassists. All you have to do is say 12 bar blues in C, and they'll know what you're talking about. So have a good time with that. Practice doing different rhythms, practice doing the walking bass line, and I bet you're gonna have a great time. Now, if you enjoyed this lesson, please feel free to check out my website at playwhatyouwant.com, where I'm offering one-on-one -on -one private lessons live over the internet. These pre-recorded lessons that you found, either with me or with other people, are good for certain things, but they're, they're generic. They're meant to educate a large audience in a very general way. You can't ask any questions, there's no interaction, and there's no one there who really cares about your development. Now, if you're interested in private lessons, come by my site, send me an email. I'm offering to give you your first private lesson with me for a full hour, 100% for free, with absolutely no obligation. Because I know that there's no reason that you should not be playing what you want to play today. Thanks for watching.